So welcome back to part two of this video series. Today we're going to fully customize the directed graph we made in the previous video, uh, which I recommend you watch. If you want total clarity about what's going on, go back and watch the previous video. Um, it will be the first link in the description, and if you're on PC or laptop or something like that, then it should appear in the top right corner. Um, so yeah, go check that out. So previously we decided to make a super minimalistic version of a directed graph. So the first thing that we could actually do in order to make our um, code a bit more complicated or a graph more complicated and more realistic is add some more nodes. Now actually this is really easy to do. Uh, hopefully you understood it from the first video. Um, but we could just add in another node. And for, so for right now we've got A to B, we've got A to C, and then we've got C to B. So we've got this triangle where pretty much everything a points to both, and then C also points to B. Um, so we could make a new node, D for example, and D could just be on the edge somewhere, and we might say, well, D is actually going to point to A, and it's not going to point towards any of the other ones. So we can quickly look at that, and I just wanted to show you this, is because it's that easy to create new um, nodes. Now, of course, the edges are going to be generated for us. so. And what we have here is obviously tuples, right? Each tuple contains a pair of nodes. So any connection you want will require you to make those connections manually at the moment. Um, and we'll probably keep it like that for this video also. But um, yeah, so we could actually go ahead and execute this. Hang on, I forgot what it's called. I think it was called test2. So Python test test two test two. Let's execute that. Hopefully there's no mistakes or anything. There shouldn't be. Um, and there you go, we've actually generated something that looks a bit like a coat hanger, you can imagine, if it had a, a bendy hook. But now we've got D connected to A, A to C, A to B, and C to B, which is exactly what we've got in our code, so that's great. So we've got four edges now, and the next thing we're going to do is create a value map, which we can basically use to give our nodes a colour. Now the premise of this, so this is going to be a dictionary and what we're going to do is, let me look, we just want our variable A, not our A, our node A, which we're going to define as, it's quite weird how this works, but not really, because I can explain it in just a second. So we're going to say A is equal to 1, and then our last node D is going to be equal to 0. Now what we're going to do, I'm going to show you something quickly which is, is it this one? It's these color maps. So we're going to go on matplotlib.org. I'll try to leave a link in the description if I remember. I probably will. And what we can do is we can basically look at sequential maps, uh, color maps. And what they are, and what they are is they are color maps that, you know, you have a, they just blend into one another. I kind of think of like the, like the spect like a light spectrum or something like that. So if we go into sequential or color maps like this. This is what they look like. They just kind of fade into one another, right? So you have like a minimum value and a maximum value. So what's going to happen here now is um, we're going to be down here in the edges. We're going to be defining the color thing, color code we want. Now we have to do that using matplotlib, which is where we're kind of coming from. And I've got that here, I didn't actually remember it. So I'm just going to go ahead and take it. And we want that on the nodes, I kind of lied. Well, I got it wrong, it's probably more accurate. And what greens are, it's just one of the available sequential color maps. So if we go in here, look, we can have greens, oranges, reds. We can have any of these, anything you want, really, you can have. And the way you do it is like this. So what we're now going to get is all of our nodes are going to um, have a certain color and the node D is going to have the color zero, uh, which is going to be whatever's at the bottom of greens. So we could actually look at that. So we could look at greens sequential color map, all right? And perhaps it looks Perhaps it looks something like this. Uh, greens, so it's going to be this one. So our one, I think it's going to be the super dark color. So that's going to be our A. 
and then our D is going to be this super um, almost whitish light green color. So hopefully you understand that. Now what about everything else? Well, this is a dictionary, right? So um, a, a is basically the uh, key, and then 1 is the value, D is the key, 0 is the value. So what we want to do next then is, well, what about B, C, yeah, what about B and C? So what we could do if we wanted to is we could say, look, B is going to be somewhere in the middle, and we could say C is going to be 0 0.75. Now that's all good, we can do that, and we need a comma here. But it's not necessarily the best way to do it, especially if we start having loads and loads of nodes. So what I'm going to do instead is we're going to be writing a um, bit of list Python list comprehension. Now and the way we're going to do that is we're going to create this list of values. Like I said, it's going to be list comprehension. And then essentially what we're saying, we're basically saying for, um, I don't want to call it values, what did I call it before? Yeah, so for nodes in val map, naturally it's going to be into our nodes, g dot nodes. So this is kind of our list comprehension, but we don't have an expression yet that we're going to actually assign to values. So the expression is just so this is like our items, this is our list, so G nodes, it's just going to be A, B, C, D. Uh, and then what we want here is we want val map dot get. Now, so this is nodes. And we want like 0 0.5, for example. Now I'll explain that to you, it's really simple. So the get method is just something that's part of the Python standard library. Um, what it does is it's going to go through uh, value map, which is our uh, map, sorry, which is our dictionary, and it's going to return all of the values um, if they have a value, right? If not, it's going to assign it the value 0 0.5. So if we did an iteration, right, so we've got A, B, C, and D, and we're saying for nodes in g.nodes, so A, B, C, and D, val map.get nodes, so it's going to start with A. Does node A, does A exist in our key? Yes, it does, so the value is going to be 1, then it's going to be B. Does B exist in val map? And the answer is no. Um, so what it's going to do is we're going to assign B to 0 0.5. Does C exist in val map? No. So we're going to assign C to 0 0.5. Does D exist in val map? Yes, it's going to be 0. So we've now created a bunch of values. Um, and what we want to do now is just put them in really. So where are we going to do that? It's just node color, and then that's going to be equal to values. So I'm looking at the documentation. So node colors, I think it was color, it's node color. And that's going to equal our values. And what you can do as well if you want, if you want it to look neater, you can kind of just let's bring it over to the next line. Should probably have it over here somewhere, just so it's in line with this bracket. And I really think this is it. Um, I don't think I'm missing anything. We're going to do some more also, but let's go ahead and execute this Python script. And as you can see now, I don't know if I kept it up, but I didn't keep up the green, but it's exactly as I said, we've got what A, which was this dark color, and then D, which is basically this light color, and all the other nodes are uh, this other green, which is 0 0.5, which is halfway in between the two. So now we're actually able to control that so it looks really neat um, and again see now if we added E for example again it doesn't have to be E but if we added E and let's say we added this to we pointed that towards D then E now going through the same logic as before it's going to have this this green value that B and C have so if we execute this Python script now you've got E pointing to D and it's got the same color so we've got a bit more control, we've got different nodes, different colors, it's starting to look nice.